It's February 4th today, and I'm visiting my father in Marietta, California. His name is Bill Harris, and he was born in 1920. Um, he's going to tell us a little bit about his life and um, his service in the Marine Corps, United States, and especially about his experience at Pearl Harbor and during World War II. So, uh, I'd like to ask Dad first about, um, you were on the USS Nevada there at Pearl Harbor, right? Yeah, what, uh, what we call seagoing. Okay. On a, on a battleship, there had about 1,300 men, uh, about 1,200 sailors and 100 Marines. They had the 100 Marines just in case they needed a landing force to go ashore. And so then we had certain duties on the, the uh, battleship, uh, like uh, orderly duties, um, that um, they uh, ran errands for the captain of the ship, and uh, uh, just uh, general things. And then uh, they would uh, had certain guns that we'd man. And it uh, didn't matter what your, your status was, uh, during a battle, uh, you assume, assumed a battle station, and uh, in my specific instance, uh, I was a gunner, and on this gun, it was a five-inch gun, that means five inches across uh, the projectile, and it was about five inches across, and then it was about uh, maybe a total of about two feet long, counting the, the charge that went with it that would make it go off. And we had a crew on the thing, about a uh, ten-man crew that would load this, and the shell was really super heavy. And that, of course, was the heaviest guy we had. as a big superman that he was known as that would throw this cartridge in the breech of the gun. And um, uh, anyway, uh, but everybody had a battle station. You're either passing ammunition or, like in my case, I was the uh, uh, gunner. Oh. I, would, uh, I didn't pull the trigger, but I, I turned a wheel on one side of the weapon that uh, made the weapon go up and down in the crosshairs. And uh, in the scope, and uh, oh, it had a scope. It had a scope on the. It had on a the... scope. Okay. Uh, two scopes, one on each side. Uh huh. One for the uh, to the gun go up and down, mm -hmm. and then one for it go crossways. Okay, vertical yeah. and horizontal, huh? Right. Yeah. Okay. Windage. And uh, all right. The. Uh, so you were telling me that that um, when you came to Pearl Harbor, uh, you noticed first that. Um, there was not much room in the harbor for the battleships to go in there. And, right, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I remember about the time, well, just before Pearl Harbor, uh -huh. that uh, we were standing on the lifeline. The lifeline is a fence that goes around the deck outside. Okay. And uh, we were leaning on it there, and I was talking to a seaman who was the lowest ranked man in the Navy. Okay. Seaman. And of course I was the lowest ranked man in the Marine Corps, private. <laughs> and uh, we were having a discussion when we went in Pearl Harbor there, we said, you know, this would be a heck of a place to be in case of a war. Uh, your ship would be inside here and all the other ships. And uh, how could they get out? They could put a ship in the harbor there and a barge and block it or they block up the whole fleet. And it just makes us kind of laugh to know that a private and a seaman uh, were well accompanied, um, acquainted with the fact that that would be not very smart in time of war, and the higher generals and admirals didn't. And did you they, notice that the, the ships also were all lined up in a row like ducks? Did you, yeah, that's did you, the way they always were when they went in there. Yeah, and did you... The did whole you, fleet, yeah. Did you think that would be bad for an attack, too? 
Oh, definitely. Uh -huh. And it really wasn't the fault of the service because they were limited on the amount of money that they could spend. Oh, I they see. They could only go out on maneuvers a certain amount mm -hmm. because it cost too much. And that was mm -hmm. during the 30 Depression. Okay, know, during day. the 30s, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, they couldn't spend that kind of money. So uh -huh. it really wasn't their fault. Uh huh. They uh -huh. had to put them someplace. But you had observed, Larry, with that other seaman that, that the the uh, ships there in the Pearl Harbor were pretty vulnerable. Yeah, they were very dangerous. Uh huh. Yeah. So you you went on to tell me that when when the attack happened, um, you were where were you on the on the ship exactly when you, when well, you first? I was actually in the food service. Okay. And uh, I was in the galley. Okay. And Which I, is below deck, below the decks. Uh, no, I was up on nearly top side. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And uh, I was up, way up. And, okay. And. Um, um, of course, they sounded the uh, general alarm. Okay. And we all went to our battle stations. And okay. Uh, like so you I say everybody had a battle station. Right. So and you went I to this five-inch gun. I was this trainer. Yeah. Was a trainer. Okay. Because like a train, it goes crossways. Okay. And the pointer is going up and down. Okay. He's a pointer. Yeah. And uh, we got off a couple of shots as a as the uh, planes came in. Okay. We got off a couple of shots, but then we had to stop because our shells were landing over in Honolulu. Oh, yeah. And uh, as the planes came in. Did you see them exploding over there? Well, we knew they would. The, yeah, right? because it was pointing yeah. that direction, sure. And so we had to stop. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and the five-inch gun isn't really for shooting down planes. Or, well, not basically, but yeah. they, they were... Uh -huh. uh, you can shoot at them. Uh huh. Okay. And give them a bad time. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Make them nervous. Please. So, so then you were saying that um, uh, one thing I found interesting you were telling me about earlier was that um, you found out later that the Japanese had been watching the harbor f with their spies from the hills and, and mapping out exactly where the ships are, um, and so. Um, yeah, for months. Okay, for months they've been mapping out where the ships were. Okay, yeah. and then you said you, you were telling me that uh, the um, the Nevada, which the ship you were on, uh, or battleship, I should say, um, wasn't initially attacked. It was it, you were you were in the front row. Why don't you tell me a little bit of how we that up, happened? We were in clear at the back end of the. Oh, back end. The double row. They had a double okay. row. Double row of battleships. Okay. We were clear at the back end because we'd been out on maneuvers. Okay. And uh, we came in just by ourselves. Okay. And so they didn't have us on their maps. Oh, the, yeah. Mapping from the mountains. The Japanese didn't have mountains. you on the maps. Right. right. Okay. And so then they saw us getting them. We got underway. But let's let's first. They, they, the Japanese didn't have your ship on the map, so they attacked all the other ships first. Right, yeah. Okay, okay. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah. You know, that they, they, we lucked out. Yeah, because the, Jap the Japanese, in my experience anyway, they're very disciplined and rigid in, in how, what they're told to be done. Okay, that was my experience when I was living in Japan for a while. They only do what they're, they're told. So I thought that was an interesting observation because um, Americans would be more creative and, and say, you yeah. know, we'll change the plan if, there, if something's different. But it was very interesting to me, how, when you described that to me, how the Japanese just stuck to their plan no matter what, even if it, even if, even if it had changed, yeah. you know, with the, the map. So basically what happened was they attacked all the other ships, the Arizona, all the other battleships were attacked first, and your ship was not attacked for at a while. Point, yeah, at that, at that, that point, point, it hadn't been attacked. So then go ahead and tell us what happened. And so, uh, anyway, the officers uh, uh, were ashore. Okay. okay. They had they could get off overnight. Okay. So they were ashore, and um, so it was hard to get the ship underway. So a chief petty officer got the ship underway. Uh huh. And uh, we were cruising out and underway, and. Um, then the Japanese, they saw us getting underway. <laughs> you saw you get, trying and to get so away. <laughs> then they came after us. Well, they all came down and really... Just buzzing. Yeah. After us, and we really got sprayed. So you said that you you initially got hit with the torpedo, or did they bomb you first, the ship? Do you remember which was first? The bombs or the torpedo? 
Well, both at the same time. Oh, both at the same time. Torpedo. Okay. We were getting on the way and they were bomb, bombing it. Okay, and you thought it may have been as many as five bombs that hit the Nevada? What? It, you thought it may have been as many as five bombs that hit the Nevada? I think so. Yeah, okay. it was a lot. It was a lot. And then one, one torpedo that hit the, the uh, forecastle, that's the front of the ship. Okay, and that was a torpedo from a plane, an aerial torpedo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it dropped it. Right. And so we started going down, so they had to do something with her. Uh huh. And of course, there was a chief petty officer that was uh, guiding the ship. Right. Getting it on the way. And so they decided to run it aground. Okay. So uh, just a little ways before the harbor entrance, uh, he ran it aground so it wouldn't block the entrance. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, then we got off of it at that point. We'd gotten off a couple okay. of shots, uh -huh. which we didn't do any good because we had to stop because Honolulu was in the background. Right, right, and right. And shots would go over there and land. Yeah, yeah. Now you had mentioned also to me that um, <coughs> there was obviously wounded on the ship, and you you said that you tried to help one uh, seaman that or it was actually the captain's orderly. I think you said. Yeah. Yeah. What what happened in that instance? Well, he'd uh, been there where a bomb went off, and the, the flash of the bomb just seared his face. Wow. And his hands that were were. Uh, uh, um, visible. Okay. Whereas sleeves were that kind of protected his skin. Yeah. But he was burnt hands, burnt face. Wow. So I I didn't know what to do, and so we had some grease, real clean grease from the galley, mm -hmm. and we rubbed that on his face. Yeah. And his hands. Uh huh. And I think that kind of relieved the, the, the pain. Some of the pain a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And oh, it is totally unprepared though. Yeah. And, and uh, people are just in total confusion. Yeah. Uh huh. And so then, uh, did they take those people that were wounded off the ship by um, onto the beach and then take them away? Do you remember? Yeah. Finally, um, but the, like the rescue boats and all, they were all tied just, up. Yeah. Well, they were all hit. You know. And oh, I see. Yeah. Get them off the ship. Uh huh. The ships were all sunk. Yeah. And, and you said too, the machine guns that were on the top, where they normally would. Use they all the barrels were burned up because they they weren't prepared. With yeah, oh, they just they they just really uh, mm -hmm. use those machine guns until the barrels were just, just yeah burned up. Out. Yeah, I think okay. if they would have been more prepared, they would have had al alternative barrels for them, you know, yeah, already, but they yeah. didn't. Yeah. And, uh, uh huh. They they uh, they got several planes. Uh huh. Interesting. Machine guns did. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we waded through the oil and mud and, mm -hmm. and got ashore and got away from it. What happened when you when you got ashore? Well, when we got ashore, it kind of died down by then. Okay. And uh, they they bombed around into some of the airports and all, and then they finally left. Okay. And of course, we didn't know what was out there. Okay. You know, if they were, they were coming more. A, Fleet of ships over the horizon. Sure. And we're what? So we were on the alert uh, for quite a little while. That mean days or well, hours? Just kind of overnight. The first night was okay. really bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and you could see that you could see that ships on Battleship Row they were all on fire and yeah, smoke. It was oh, it was pitiful. Yeah. One of the real interesting things though uh, was Roosevelt. It was about uh, I don't know how long after. Uh, that attacked. Okay. That he talked on um, TV, okay. radio. Yeah. And told about uh, he was trying to inspire all the people. Okay. You know that were going to war and to really get with it. Right. And work. And so he said that uh, uh, he was going to give us an estimate that we would be able to defeat the Japanese. Uh huh. Not only the Japanese but the Germans and uh, all of the the ones that were against us. Okay. And so we really needed that. Oh yeah. Because you know our our uh, morale was really down. Mm -hmm. So I I can remember his speech. He said, "I want to. It's going to be hard for you to believe this, but I want you to know what kind of production that we're going to get into mm -hmm. on tanks and all." Oh yeah. And he gave the figures. It was absolutely unbelievable. He. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't remember the exact number, but he said, we'll be producing um, like thousands of tanks and we in the